Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm here in Maryland. Tomorrow I'm going to be testifying at a right to repair hearing and I plan to record it as well. Today, I wanted to talk about some good news in Minnesota regarding right to repair. It looks like we were greenlit for a vote in the House, which is a great thing. They want to vote on the right to repair bill, and it seems like they want to vote favorably. However, that's not what I'm here to announce. What I'm here to announce is that that's not going to happen, because there's one individual standing in the way of allowing that to happen. Senator Gary Doms. Now, many of you have said that when I make the right to repair argument, I should make something much simpler. A lot of you have given me different versions of this in comments and email. Lewis, you should make an argument like this. Have you ever been to a car dealership when your car broke down and heard it would be two to $6,000 to fix what's wrong with it? Have you ever then hightailed it out of that dealership and gone someplace where they told you it'd be $179 to fix your car based on a friend's recommendation? Had it fixed and then had everything work? That's what right to repair is about. It's having the freedom to go someplace but the dealer so that you don't get ripped off. I think that's an excellent argument, and I accept the criticism that that's a, that simplified version of the argument is going to connect a lot more with the minds of ordinary Americans. You know who that argument doesn't work on? The consumer protection chair when that person ran an auto dealership. Yes, Senator Gary Doms, head and chair of the Consumer Protection Committee, ran an auto dealership and is against right to repair. Imagine that. There seems to be afraid that there is going to be shade tree mechanics that screw everything up and don't do proper work, and that's why he seems to be cock-blocking this every time it cups up for a vote. I want to be very clear here when I, when I say this. This is not a case of there being very complex politics and a bunch of people forward, a bunch of people against them. This is a group of people that want to vote on the bill, that want to vote yes on the bill, but can't because it's not put up for a vote because one individual is keeping that from happening. I understand the argument that you don't want people who don't know what they're doing working on devices and screwing them up. The reality is that that already happens, and there is no right to repair bill. You've seen many videos in this channel where I go over work that bad repair shops have done that I think they're in the minority, but they, they screwed up and they did a bad job. That's without a repair bill. You're not going to stop that by keeping this bill from passing. If anything, you're going to continue encouraging it. If I'm a smart engineer, where am I going to want to work? Am I going to want to work for a national semiconductor or Intersil or Texas Instruments? Or am I going to want to work in an industry where just to get access to schematics and tools to do my job, I have to act like a criminal? I can't tell you where I got that schematic because if I do, they'll get arrested. I can't tell you where I got that chip from because then something bad may happen to me. If you're smart and you're in demand, and you're good at your job, are you really going to want to work in an industry where you have to act like a drug smuggling mule to get an ISL 9240 chip just so you could fix a MacBook that doesn't charge and get someone's data back? No, the people that are going to be willing to do that are A, bottom feeders that can't get a better job, or B, people who are nuts like me who just love their job, love their craft enough that they're willing to put up with all that bullshit when there's something else they could be doing with their time. If we bring respect and dignity back to this business the way it has existed from the beginning of electronics up until sometime in the 80s and 90s, then you would see an influx, a return of qualified, good technicians re-enter the field, and the charlatans wouldn't be able to compete. They'd be out of here because they'd be run out of business when they're forced to compete with people that actually know what they're doing. And I would present the argument to someone like Senator Gary Doms that at this point in time, it's not the independents that are the shade tree mechanics. It's the dealership. It's the Apple authorized service providers that know so little about their devices that they will say straight faced that the headphone jack is hard soldered onto the logic board and therefore can't be replaced. Okay, so you so the hard you're saying that on the iPhone 6 the headphone jack is hard soldered it's soldered directly on the motherboard? Mhm. Mm okay, so it's not on a separate cable that then connects to the motherboard? Mm, I don't believe so, no. Huh. A, it can be replaced if it's hard soldered, and B, it's not hard soldered, it's on a $5 flex cable that you would be able to tell if you had ever opened a damn iPhone. These are the people that Apple is authorizing to work on iPhones that are listed on Apple.com, a place that doesn't know the difference between a soldered on part and a flex cable. 
I would dare say that the shade tree mechanics are the ones that are telling customers it'll cost $1,100 to $1,900 to replace a logic board, a top case, and all this other stuff. Basically, all the components that we need to replace is going to cost more than $1,000. So To fix it entirely will yeah. cost more than $1,000? Yeah. And then if we need to replace the display as well, that's another $780. But we're still looking at a total of around $1,200 there. Wow. When the actual problem is a bent pin and a screen cable. See the, see the pin that's sticking out? Okay. So that pin is actually most likely the pin for the backlight. And as you can see, it's probably not making contact because it's bent outwards. And I got my set of tweezers over here, and I'm just going to try to push that back into the slot and try to get it back into its groove. All right. As you can see, we've got an apple, and we mm -hmm. have a light. So it's it fixed. Yeah. That person could have paid $1,100 for that repair in this video and still not had a working product because they were going to replace the logic board in the top case. Not the screen cable. <sighs> the shade tree mechanics are the ones that can't spend 10 seconds looking at the device and say, oh, no backlight. Oh, that's related to the screen. Oh, let me make the screen. Oh, oh yeah, that's Kim Bin's bend. These are the shade tree mechanics, not us. I am not a constituent of Senator Gary Doms in Minnesota. So I don't really have as much sway there, even though recently it looks like I've had... $13,800 of repair business, excluding sales of quicks and parts and tools of all that, just repairs $13,800 from customers in Minnesota recently. I am still not a constituent of Gary Doms. But if you are, if you're a resident of Minnesota, if you watch what we do, if you like what we you do, if we disagree with the idea of someone who ran an auto dealership being against rights to repair, being the head of the Consumer Protection Committee, you vote. And again, when it comes time to deal with these types of politicians, take the soft approach. Try to call, try to email, try to have a real honest conversation. There's one gentleman, Don W., that emails me on a regular basis, and he always send, he sends me meetings with politicians, strategies, all sorts of stuff. I feel bad because I don't always have the time to reply with my busy schedule, but be one of the people that's involved. Be the person that knows the faces and the names of the politicians who can, have, who, who can talk shop about where they went to school and so on and so forth. Have a relationship. You never know. You may actually get some change done. And I think if people are willing to do that in Minnesota, they may be able to change this gentleman's opinion. Because when I take a look at followthemoney.org, this is not a story of a person who's in the pocket of large corporate interests. This is probably, this seems like a story of a guy that ran a car dealership, realized that, you know, idiots who work on cars screw things up, who has a bias as a result of his personal experience. And that's totally fine. We all have biases as a result of our personal experiences, which is why it's important that we speak to other people so that we can learn what's going on and so that we have other perspectives. I think it would be a good thing for people who are open to right to repair passing in Minnesota to have these conversations with Gary Doms, to speak with him, to call him, to email him, to have real conversations because that's how you implement real change. And here it does seem to be that the one barrier to right to repair passing in Minnesota is this one politician. So that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.